Hi all. In this video, let's learn how to debug a sample JavaScript code. We will learn a step by step procedure by looking into a basic example. So firstly, the first step, the debugging, in, it means we are going to find out what's the exact bug. So the step one, what we need to deal is we need to understand the bug first. We need to reproduce the bug. So for example, here we have two text boxes. I will try to explain uh, like two and three. Now. I'm trying to add this two and three. So my expected output should be five, but let's see. So now my expected output is 23. So this is the error, but I'm expecting it as a five, but I got 23. Of course, this may be the, a small basic example, but here I'm trying to explain you the steps, how we are going to look into the problem and what are the ways and steps you are going to trace out to fix this bug. So now first step is you need to reproduce your bug. So here the expected output is five, but you got 23. So now this is the first step. You need to understand the bug. So you have reproduced your bug. You understood your bug. So now the second step, you need to start the debugging. So at what point, what, what point you need to start the debugging means. So in the browser, you need to click right click and you need to go to the developer tools, right click and inspect. If you do this, you will be getting a developer tool like this. So the front end, people most of the time they used to spend half of the time in the ID and half of the time in this developer tools. So once you go to this ID, you have many tabs here, but the main tab you need to look into is sources. While you're debugging, this is sources tab or sources panel is a main thing we, we need to look into. Here, while uh, I will explain you the parts, the left part, this is called as file navigator. What does this exactly mean? So whenever your application loads into the browser, those files will be available in this files navigator. Once you click any of the file here, that file would be loaded in this. This is called as a code editor. So what all the code we wrote having in this function in this file would be visible here. This is known as a middle part is known as a code editor. And now the right side part, this is the main part. This is known as a JavaScript debugging panel. So enter, you will be having most of the tools here to find out uh, what variable has what value, what are the breakpoints, what are the events, what are the watch expressions, everything you will be having in this panel. So these are the three parts of the sources tab. So here, this is the part where you are going to debug. So this is a second step or second thing you need to understand. And the third part is you need to keep some breakpoints. What are the breakpoints? So let's try to understand them. So in a code, you have here. So you will be having console.logs. So most of the time users will be using the console.logs to understand what is the exact uh, problem. So the problem or uh, the thing with the console log is you need to manually write those console logs for each and every line to examine the values in that line. So with the help of the console logs also, we could able to find out and fix the bugs. We can debug, but it takes some more time. It takes some more manual effort. Instead of that, you can debug with the help of the debug or debug keyword. You can use a debug keyword directly here or, or else I will show you one more uh, step. So for now, I will uh, directly use this debug keyword here. So if you keep debug keyword here, the function flow will start at stop at this point. So at which point I need to keep the debug. So the third step here is you need to understand where exactly you need to keep the breakpoint at what position. So here, if you understand where at what point you are getting the output, once after you click this button, you will be getting the output. So it means once you click this button, then you need to debug the code. So that's the reason I have kept the debugger at this point. If you're not aware of where is this function. So when I click a button, if you don't know at what point this uh, uh, you you don't know about this function and you don't know at where you want to keep this debugger keyword. Then the browser is providing us one more functionality, one more feature. Like if you go here in the here, so in the tools, sorry, uh, let me show you here in the right panel in the event listener. So what I'm trying to explain here is. If you click one button, you are, you are getting one value. You are getting one result. If you don't know where exactly that button function is there, 
If you know, you can directly go to that function and you can keep the debugger keyword and the control, the browser will stop the execution at this point. And then you can debug the code line by line that I will explain before that. If you don't know the function where the function exactly exists in your code, then you have an option browser is providing. This is an uh, uh, important point we can uh, learn here. You have event listener breakpoints here. You need to go in these breakpoints. You have a couple of breakpoints. So here I will explain you about mouse. So in the mouse click, you will go into click. So when you click the button, the browser is uh, showing this uh, debugging. So you don't know the function where you want to keep the debugger. In that cases, you can use this option. If you just click here, now the browser will take over the control and wherever you click the button, not only this button, all throughout the application, wherever you cl click the button, then it will pause the execution. It will make sure that the all the clicks in this application will have a breakpoints. So this is a main point. If you're not aware where the exact breakpoint you need to do, you can use this. So as I know where it is, then you can directly keep the debugger keyword here. And one more thing, you will debugger will stop only if you have the debugger developer tools. For example, here I'm uh, I'm closing. I'm closing this developer tool. I will enter two and three. Now my expected is five, but I will get twenty three. But you're you're not uh, stopping. The browser is not stopping uh, at that breakpoint because the developer tools is not open. Even if you keep the debugger keyword, the control flow will not stop at this point if the debugger tool or developer tools is not available. So what I'm trying to explain is if you want to debug anything, you surely you need to have the developer tool. Then only the browser can understand. It should stop. It should resume. It should stop at that point. So now I have clicked this. Now I will, uh, if I click this, the fourth step is now we could able to set up some breakpoints where exactly we need to check the code. So now at this point, now you can check the code one by one, step by step. I will again uh, improve it. Uh, here you have a couple of options. So the first thing, this is to resume the execution. If you click this, the control will go out of the execution. When Whenever the browser sees a debugger keyword here, it will not execute the code. It will pause the execution at this point and it, it will provide us a way to debug the code. So now you are going to examine each and every line to understand what is happening in each and every variable. Here, let me explain you a few more points. Here we are getting into the code. Like th this option is to resume. It means you will come out of this debugger. You, you're not, if you're, if you got the output or if you got what exactly the browser is doing, just you can click and click this. Now, what happened? You got out of this function. So if you want to debug line by line, then again, I will click the button. So this is what you need to understand. So here there will be three options, step over, step into, step out. I will try to explain that uh, a bit uh, after uh, this uh, uh, bug fixing. So now let, let me go here. So F10, if you want to use a keyword, you know, keyboard key, then you can use F10. If not, I'm clicking this one time. So for each and every time I click, so you can observe. So there is a, in the right side, JavaScript debugging panel. You will have some, a couple of few more things. Here is a scope part. Here, if you understand the scope, it is, it will give you the local scope and the global scope variables and its values. Here we have add n one, add n two variables. See, and those values are in string. So I'm expecting those in a number, but those I got into string. So that's the first point. And still some is undefined because we are at this line. So it is showing as undefined. If we are out of this function, then only this addition will uh, appear and that will be added to this sum. So I will get into one more step. So now you can see here you can observe in this scope panel. This is very much important in this scope panel. You can understand. You can pause and you can see what are the variables you have and those values at that moment, not only local and you also can see the uh, global variables data as well. And one more important point here is you can also keep the watch expression statements. So for example, uh, let me add one more expression here. So if you want to understand what is the type of this sum. So if you just keep the type of sum and if you leave like this and it will examine, it will observe the sum and it will give that type whenever it, uh, it get into that situation. So let me explain this uh, watch statement. So if I click here, so if you see, 
we want the type of sum so at this point the type of sum is undefined so let's go and uh, let's once it gets some value then it will define its type so now it got the value of 2 3 and now it is showing this as a string so this watch panel it will help us to watch each and every variable or any expression you can add any expression and you can watch what is the value we are getting into that expression based on the variables so that in that way you can use this watch expression panel very much so this is about the watch panel so also you here you have a call stack it means at what point we kept our debugger and how it is executing line by line this call stack will also help in that way so this is all about so here if you understand if the sum you are getting as a 23 the reason because the type of the sum is string we got this because if you understand these are taking as a strings so we are not adding this we are concatenating this that's the reason we are getting not 5 we are getting 23 as a sum so here we understood the bug why it is getting 23 not 5 because it is not doing addition it is doing concatenation that's the reason we are getting 23 so what we need to do before doing addition we need to make these numbers converted into the numbers these strings into numbers so that is the thing we need to do so how to do that so directly also you can so i will uh, will come out of this uh, debugging and directly also you can write the code here i am doing writing the code directly i am passing this number i am passing this variable into integer because the value here will be getting as a string in the double quotes that's the reason i am trying to convert that into string because i am i am expecting a addition not a concatenation so that's the reason i am trying to convert this so we are trying to fix the issue so we understood where the bug exactly coming with the help of the scope and watch expressions so in this way you can watch any expression you can write any expression based on the variables so each in each and every line it will try to execute that expression and it will return back the value so now i have run that uh, have wrote this code directly in the browser here you, you can see it is it is asking so i can save this file i have saved this file directly you can write the code in the browser sources tab as well now you can execute this code okay let's see now what happens so we are going step by step even now also you got these two numbers as a strings but when you're trying to add you're converting these strings into numbers now if you observe you got the sum as a number right and here sum also as five not only here you can directly hover on the variables you can directly hover on these variables like this to understand what exactly value you have if you want to extract if you want to observe the object you can escape click and escape here you'll be getting a console like this and you can type what exactly is the sum so if it is an object you can type like this and you can examine its values one by one in this way you are you need to debug the code so these are these are the steps we need to follow while you are debugging and you are fixing so here you wrote directly wrote the code into the browser so once you refresh this this code will be gone so that's the reason copy paste this code in your code so i will copy paste this and i will keep that here so then only in the next refresh it will come in the correct sum correct addition will be getting whatever you do here once you refresh this you'll be going that that values will be gone so if i refresh the code here now this parsing will be gone but as i have added here it will come here but whatever the changes you do in the source panel and you can immediately check whether the fix is working or not in that way you can debug faster so one more points we can learn is step in step out step over so let me explain that part so if you have a function so let's discuss about step over so what is mean by step over so i am talking about this step over function so this is the option we have step over so this is a pause to pause the script execution and resume so let's learn about these three step over step into so step over means if you have a function like this okay and in this function you are calling here you are calling one more function get name so if you keep a breakpoint at this point a what does this step over do means it will not execute it will not execute this get name it will directly step over so it means 
once you keep a breakpoint here again it will not execute this part again it will stop at this point it means you are stepping over you are not executing you are not looking into this function so you going to do step over if you feel that error is not present in this function so in that point you can step over you know you don't want to execute at this point the breakpoint kept and you don't want to execute this code piece of code so directly now again the browser will stop at this point it will not go to the a function this function get name function because you are step over because you are not you are you are asking to come out of this function because you are sure that the bug is not present in this function so this in this cases you can go with the step over if you want to step into the function it means you have a doubt that the error may exist in the get name and and you kept the breakpoint at this point now in the get name if you go here then you can use this step into so this is the option you can do this is a step into so if you click this option then what does ha happen it will go into this function as well and it will execute one by one step by step in all this function also would be executed in the step into about this st step out this step out means if you keep any debugger here so if you are at this point now you are debugging at this point if you click this step over step out it means it will not execute the next lines it will directly come back to the execution okay you got all, about all these three options right step over step in to step out so in this way this examples you can understand when which uh, step over or step into or step uh, out when to use what so and also you have this this one so this is like uh, whenever you have multiple breakpoints at that point you can detect deactivate all the breakpoints at one shot or you can activate all the breakpoints at one point so for that reason you can use this option this is whenever you got an uncaught exception if you click this for those uncaught exceptions you can directly go you no need to keep any debugger points or breakpoints anywhere if you just click this what happens is it will pause the execution when you get any exception so this is also very much important uh, option you can use so that's it for this video in the next video i will try to explain the what are the different ways to debug the javascript code so thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos